you probably can't see that, but it says Prime Inline 5. You have no idea how happy I am that it's not 30 degrees out and I'm smoking a cigar outside. I wanted to start out with kind of the little quirks, the little quirky things that make the Prime so much different than every other bow that's basically in existence right now. Starting with the cams. Like the cams are, it's the most obvious way to start. The, the bottom cam is smaller than the top cam. And what that basically means is on a standard binary cam where both of the cams are the exact same size, they're rotating at the exact same time. The, the amount of speed and the amount of time that they're rotating is exactly the same because the arrow is centered on the string between the two cams. So in order to get good arrow flight, perfect knock travel, those are both rotating in, in synchronize, synchronize, they're synchronized, there we go. The knock is traveling this way. With the Prime, what you have is one cam that is taking up the string faster than the other cam. And they did that for this reason. Most bows nowadays, the, the center of the bow between the two cams is the arrow. So the rest, when it is, when it is all the way up holding the arrow, that is the center point between the two cams. But this bow, what they wanted to do was make this point right here where you hold the bow, the grip, the actual center point. On the Matthews, you have a few more inches of riser up top than you do down low from the throat of the grip. On this guy, it's the exact same distance, here to here. That's the biggest difference, but it sounds small, but it's massive. It's a massive, massive departure from what no most normal uh, bows are doing. Binary cam bows. By the way, this is super good. Reservo Original Placentia. Getting the cam timing right on this would therefore seem awkward because on a normal binary cam bow, you basically are taking the, the cable stops and when the cable stops both touch the cable at the same time, you know that it is in time. With this, they basically have these two small dots. You basically line the two dots up on the top cam with the two dots on the bottom. And if those ratios are the same and that creates a straight line, the bow is in tune. The problem I'm having is how, how much variation can you have before this thing is considered out of tune? I just feel like if this thing is slightly out of tune, the consequences are going to be far worse. That said, it came out of the box perfect. Like, I didn't have to touch anything. Didn't have to move the strings around, didn't have to move the cables, didn't do anything. Like, just money. All the manufacturers have different ways to basically move the cam left and right. And I don't know that this is quirky, it's just kind of new for this year. They definitely made it easier. What they did was these, these large uh, hockey puck spacers that they've had before are now not full donuts. They're not full, like, round pucks. They're actually more like a C-clip. You loosen up the Allen bolt on either side, back it out, and then you can basically uh, you use a very special tool, otherwise known as a uh, an awkward screwdriver, very large, and then you can knock those things out, scoot the scoot the cam over, and basically that's how you do your shims. I'm assuming most people are going to do this at the shop, and Prime sends the shop a specialized tool, so odds are you're not going to have to mess with it. I have not knocked the shims out on mine. Uh, I don't plan to, although I, I have a tool that I think would work. And I also think if you just like used a pair of flat needle nose pliers and opened up a little bit and then hit them perfect, maybe you mess up just a little bit of stuff. But like if you, yeah, don't do that. Just take it back to the shop. It's probably a bad idea. The next thing that just kind of drives me a little crazy, and I have a feeling it's because of patents. Uh, on the actual cam, the mod that you're shifting on the inside of the cam is labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on here. Why can't you give me the draw length like Bowtech did? Why can't it say 30 and a half, 30, 29 and a half? And I guarantee you it's because Bowtech has that patented. 
And that's kind of like a shitty, that's a shitty patent because it doesn't make me want to buy a Bowtech more. It just makes it less convenient for me to do the rest of this stuff. And it actually kind of just pisses me off that somebody is able to patent. We're going to put the draw length on the mods and we patented the draw length. So now everybody else is going to have to use like A, B, C, D, E, F, G or some. The other thing that's an annoyance to the customer is in order to move these mods, you have to have a star bit. So you're not using the actual Allen wrench. You're, you have to have a, a separate kit and it's got to be the stars. I don't know why they did that either. Maybe it's just because like there's a torque ratio that you have to get. I imagine with what prime does like what g5 does their main stuff is like this just ridiculously high-end you know whatever like medical grade machining stuff they probably were like well you see in order to get the proper amount of torque on this we can't actually use now and it's got to be a torx because blah 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 while you're adjusting the mods to actually get them to line up with your correlated draw on the sliding mod part, there is a line, and you will line that line up with your uh, with your actual draw length. So, so for me, I've got this set on 30, which is number two, and so I've got that little. No, I've actually got it on number three. I've got it set on number three, and I've got that little line pointing at number three, and those would correlate. Number three up there, number three up here, and then. The next thing that's like a little quirky, I'm actually gonna let Willie from the Archery Den tell you what he did to kind of tweak the prime. And this is definitely something that is worth messing with because it costs like two bucks. So to kind of change the feel of the back wall, uh, if you're either looking to uh, increase your holding weight or trying to get a little more soft feel out of it from just having a limb stop hitting a concrete item like the limb uh, to where as hard as it may feel, uh, I've added Hamsky, a limb pad for, or a rest shelf uh, pad from Vapor Trail. Anything piece of rubber kind of gives you a little more cushion. Um, it just kind of changes the feel a little bit to me. It increases that holding weight. Uh, you can also play around with different size O-rings. The last thing that's a little quirky about this bow, and it's, it's not really quirky, it's just one of those things where it took me a minute the first time I was messing with it. You mount the rear stabilizer bracket in front of the riser hole. Like there is a, there, there is a, uh, the threaded section goes all the way through, but it actually goes in front. So you can see by what I'm showing you here, that's how you put it on if you actually want uh, to use a rear, a rear bar. I have always felt like Prime should hold absolutely rock solid when you pick this thing up. And I did not like the way the three felt for me. Actually, I'm gonna let Willie explain why he thinks the three did not feel good for me, but the five did. Well, big reason why that is, is because Prime with their center grip uh, makes a bow feel as if it may be two inches shorter axle to axle. So a 35 may feel due to profile uh, of a 33. You get all the performance out of a 35 inch bow, longer riser. They've shortened the brace height to maintain the speed on a longer riser. And they've kind of battled, you know, that oh, the shorter the right, the shorter the brace height, the less forgiving a bow. Well, the longer the riser, a more forgiving of the bow. So you take their shorter brace height, but put it on their longest bow they build, and this 35 inch bow turns out feeling more like a 33 in the hand. The and 30, the 33 inch bow feels like a 30, and the 31 inch bow feels sub 30. So when I moved up to the five at the shop, even just bare bow, shooting out of a whisker biscuit, no, you know, stabilizers, no nothing there was a huge difference in the stability of the bow for me over the three. Like I get these little micro jitters and I've talked about that before, but with this bow, those kind of tamed out and were standard with what I've seen so far from the Revolt XL, the Matthews V3X and the, the primer all kind of in that same category, but this is two inches longer axle to axle. Another thing that's a bit odd that I'm not used to when tuning this because the arrow is not the center point of the bow and your grip is, which I've said 400 times so far, as you're tuning, if you raise your rest, it may actually not only move the, the, the point vertical up and down, but it may actually move it left to right as well. It, it's a little odd. So I feel like if you're, a, you know, if you have been shooting a binary cam bow and you go to pick this thing up and you go to tune it and you're getting a little bit of a weird paper tear, you kind of have to do like, up and down and left and right to end up getting the bow exactly where you want it to go. It's kind of at the same time, which is a little strange. Luckily for me, 
I didn't have to shim the cams and I'm getting a bullet hole. Now, I, I'm not afraid of putting it in the press and knocking the pucks out and reversing it and doing that, but I didn't really have to mess with it. As I slightly raised the rest up, the actual point came in exactly where it should have been. And I also think my arrow is maybe just a hair weak for this bow. The Black 3, the Nexus 4, and now the, the 5, the inline 5, all took me a little bit longer to get set up than most of the other bows. And this was no exception. And this is why I think that perhaps Prime doesn't show as well at a shop as, as it could. Like we were talking about the um, winning the 10 foot game and every range that you go to, it seems like unless you've got just this incredible shop that's gonna let you get a bow dialed in and go shoot at 20 yards, which the majority of them are gonna have you shooting at three yards because they don't want you flinging arrows into the background of a bow that's not 100% set up. And I feel like the Prime suffers more in that game than the binary cam bows. And I, I don't know why. Like to me, it just, it didn't, it didn't show as well. Prime is, unrivaled in the build quality of the bow like the actual manufacturing process is unbelievable the finishing process that they do on the riser the thing was flawless out of the box like it is very obvious that they use their machines for like some really really high-end stuff that costs a whole lot more than like a $1,300 bow I talked about it a little bit in the last time I talked about the Prime. I like that they went with the 35 axle to axle, but the shorter brace height, because you're gaining that kind of stability out of a little bit of the longer axle to axle, and then you're gaining a little more speed out of the shorter brace height. So after having it for a couple of weeks and really getting it dialed in, this is a fantastic bow. But for me, I feel like it just doesn't, for some reason, I just don't think it shows as well at the shop. It took more tweaking, more playing with for me to get it how I want it. But now, I really enjoy it. Picking it up, coming home every day, going out and shooting a couple dozen arrows, picking up the bow tech, shooting that one. I just got the Matthews, so I'm gonna start shooting that one as well. I really enjoy the bow. What I've noticed out of shooting it for you know a few weeks now is when I get out to distance, for some reason, it doesn't feel as forgiving to me. Like, and maybe I need to do some more tweaking with arrows, but it seems like when I miss, the misses are a lot bigger than with like the Bowtech, which they're equally set up. I've spent, you know, less time on the Bowtech, but the arrows are, you know, are breaking great. PJ Riley did some sort of big bow shoot off. I can't remember what magazine, I'll see if I can find it, but they, they put it out and it was a really good, like kind of in-depth review. And the Prime for them, they all liked it, but it didn't shoot as well for them either. And I just wonder, does this take a little more time and a little more honing to actually get it to be exactly what you want it to be? This isn't like an initial thoughts video. It's kind of a, you know, a few weeks follow up of my, the, the kind of evolving of my first impressions with the bow. And it's like I said, I'm still really enjoying shooting it and I feel like I'm getting closer and I like the process of kind of honing it down and figuring it all out. But like with the Bowtech, it was extremely easy and the thing's just hammering. It's not a very fast bow, but this is something that I feel like takes a little more time. I keep smoking my cigar, drinking my scotch, and I'm gonna go in and start editing this video, see if I can actually get it out in time. Thanks for watching, I'm Brandon McDonald.